Hey, hi, hello and welcome to the third video in this series where we build an entire ChatGPT app. Now we're building this from the ground up, including authentication and being able to save your chat history and also play around with different chat models. In the first video, we used Firebase authentication to create a login page. And in the second video, we built the chat list view. In this video, we're going to build the chat view and then finally connect it up in the last video. So let's get into it and start building out the chat view. Now in the previous video, we actually created the chat view model for us to be able to navigate over to this page and pass in the chat ID. And now we're just going to build out the UI for the chat view. What I wanna have in the chat view is actually the ability to select which model we want to use, similar to the way it works on the chat GPT app on the web. So I wanna be able to select that before I actually start typing. And then once I've sent the first message, it'll just lock in that model and then use basically that same model for the rest of the chat. I also wanna have a scroll view that displays all of the messages and we'll have a different style for the message based on whether it's the assistant sending it or the user. And then of course we need the text field and the send button down the bottom. So let's go ahead and build that right now. Let's jump into the chat view model first and set up the variables that we're going to need to manage. Inside the chat view model, I'm going to create a struct for our app message. We already have an app chat model, but now we also need an app message model. So let's go ahead and create our app message model. Our app message is going to be identifiable, codable, and also hashable. It's going to have an optional ID. And the reason it's optional is in case we come across any issues decoding the ID. We also want the text for the message, which is of type string, the sender role, and we'll just leave this as a string for now. And then the also the created at, which will also be of type date. Now, before I continue, this is the point where I'm going to bring in the open AI library that we're going to be using. So the one I've been playing around with the most is from Macpaw. So if you jump over file, add packages, I'm going to go ahead and show you. So this is the URL that you want to copy. It's github.com forward slash macpaw forward slash openai.git. And I'm going to add in this package also up to the next major version and let that import into our project. The reason I want to add this now is because there are some objects that I do want to reference from that library. An example of that is the role. I'm actually going to go ahead and add that now. So I'll import openai and change the role here to be chat.role. And we'll just have that set from the beginning. And I've got an issue with the date here because I got rid of foundation. And there we have it. Now, if we jump back to our chat view model, we can add a published variable for our chat. And that'll be our app chat. We'll also have a published list of our messages. And this will be messages of type app message. And this will be an empty array. And we'll also keep track of the message text. This is the message that we're currently writing. And we'll use this to store the text from our text field. This will be of type string and equal to an empty string at first. And then we also want our selected model. And this is going to be of type chat model. And we're going to start off as GPT 3.5 turbo. Now we make sure that our app chat is optional so we don't have to initialize it in here and we should be good to go. Now, if we head back to our chat view, we can then connect everything up without having any issues. So we're going to start by adding a VStack and at the top of our VStack is going to be the segmented control. So I'm going to create our chat selection view and this is going to be of type sum view and then we can return a group here and pop that into the top. So if I run the preview just to make sure everything is still working at this stage, we should have an empty view. There we go. So the way this is going to work is our chat actually starts off with no selected model. Once the user sends their first message, that model then gets saved into the app chat and then the user will be able to continue the rest of their chat using that same model. So at first we can actually check if the model has been set or not. And if it hasn't, we show the pick of you. Once the model has been set, then we can actually choose to hide that segmented control. So the way we're going to check for that is by saying if let model equal to view model dot chat dot model dot raw value then we're going to show that model if it's already been selected. So I'm going to put a piece of text at the top that tells us which model is being used. Else, I'm going to show a picker view and we'll choose this one here with selection, content and label. The selection is going to be the view model dot selected model. And our content is going to be for each chat model dot all cases. Make sure we reference its ID with self. And this will be the model. And it's just going to be simply text being value, And our label here is going to be an empty string. We make sure that we have the picker style set to segmented, and then we can add some padding just to clean this up a little bit. And one thing I forgot to do is make sure that our view model is a state object. So I'll go ahead and add that annotation here. 
And that also means we need to make our view model an observable object. And now once we go back, we should be able to build and run and wait for this. And there we have it. So now we have this segmented control that lets us pick between GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. Now we're going to add a scroll view reader. And the reason we're using a scroll view reader is so that whenever a new message comes in or we send the message, we can actually scroll to the bottom and basically have auto scroll. So this will be our scroll view. And then instead of a scroll view inside our scroll view reader, we'll just use a list, which is pretty much a scroll view. So our list is going to iterate over view model dot messages. And this is going to be a message. And then this is where we can reference our message view for message, which we haven't created yet. And now we can go ahead and create that function here. So we can say func message view for message of type app message. And we're going to return some view and we'll just send back a text value. And it's going to be our message dot text. And it's going to our view model and create some sample data. But first make sure at the end of here, we say on appear and we'll say view model dot fetch data. So then we can jump into our view model, create our fetch data function. And this is going to say self dot messages is equal to, and we're going to create a couple messages. So we're going to say app message, pass in a random ID. The text is going to be, hello, how are you? The role will be from user and just a standard date. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And it's going to be a response from the assistant. I'm good. Thanks. And go back to our chat view. And there we go. Now we have our list of messages coming in. So we have those two messages showing here and we have our model selection up top. Now that we've got our messages showing, we're going to style our list of messages and also the message view. The first thing I want to do is get rid of the standard list style. So I'm going to say list style and make this plain. And then to distinguish the messages from their background, I'm also going to add a background color and it's going to be color UI color dot system group background. I'm then going to remove the list separator that we have here. So let me just zoom in a bit so we can see that better. And then on each message view, I'm going to say list row separator and change the visibility to hidden. And that should get rid of the separators here. And then also list row background. And I'll make that color dot clear. And that gets rid of the background here. And now we can customize the styling of every message view individually. Now when we go to the message view, I'm going to wrap this in an H stack. And the reason for that is because I want to add spaces on either the left or the right, depending on who sent the message. So I'm going to say if message dot role is equal to assistant, then I'm going to add a spacer and I actually want this to be on the right hand side. And then if it's user, then I want it to push to the left hand side. So now this is the user message and the one on the left is the assistant message. So first thing we'll do is add a background color message dot role is equal to user. And if it's the user, we're going to say the background color will be blue. Otherwise it's going to be white. And similarly, we'll add a foreground style message dot role is equal to user. And if it's a user, the foreground style is going to be white. Otherwise it will be black. And then we'll add some horizontal padding and we'll add some vertical padding. And the vertical padding will be slightly smaller than the horizontal one. We'll say something like 12. And then I want to round the corners. So we're going to clip shape and I'll clip it to a rounded rectangle of corner radius, let's say 12, and the style will be continuous. So there's our message view. And the last thing we want to add here is our message input view. So let's go ahead and also create that message input view of type view. And for this, we're going to have an H stack and a text field. The text field is going to have a title and the title is going to say, send a message. And the text is going to bind to our view model dot message text. And we're going to have a button on the right hand side. And that button is going to be our send button. So we'll choose an action and label. And it's going to say view model dot send message. And our label is going to be text. And we'll say send. 
Now we also need to make sure we have the send message function in our chat view model. So let's head over to our chat view model, func send message. And that should be good to go. And at the bottom of our VStack, we're going to add in our message import view. And then if we zoom out a little bit, we can see the text field and our button on the right hand side. Of course, we want to add some styling now. So we're going to add some padding to our text field. We'll add a background color and the color will be color.gray with an opacity of 0.1. We'll also round the corners of our text field as well. And we'll say rounded rectangle with a corner radius of 12. And of course our entire H stack, we wanna add some padding to as well. So it looks a little nice and snug there. We'll add a background color to our button. So the background color here will also be blue. And then I want some padding on this one. And then I'm also going to round the corners of this with a rounded rectangle of corner radius. You guessed it, 12. Now to be able to see our text, we'll add a foreground style of white and there we have it if you want it to stand out we'll say bold and then we'll also connect this with an on submit and then also trigger the view model dot send message function now the last thing left is to add the logic for when we send a message so let's jump into our chat view model when we send a message we're going to create a new app message so we'll say var new message is equal to app message let it take in a unique identifier. So we'll create a UID with a UID string and the text is going to be message text. The role is going to be a user and we'll just create at the current date. We'll then say messages.append, add our new message and then clear the text. So we'll say message text is equal to an empty string. If I jump back over to my chat view, I should be able to test this out and say, hello there, send the message and the message pops up in here. To be able to scroll to the latest message every time a new message is either received or sent, we're just going to make sure that we add the ID to every message view. So we're going to say message, message dot ID, and then we'll create our scroll to bottom function. And we need to pass in our scroll view, which is scroll proxy, so scroll view proxy. Then we want to grab the last message. So we'll say guard view model dot messages dot is empty. So we want to make sure our messages are not empty. And then we want the last message to be equal to view model dot messages dot last else we'll just return. And then we'll say scroll view dot scroll to last message dot ID. And if we want this to be animated, we can just wrap this in a with animation, grab this and pop it in there. And then we'll add our on change. So on change of view model dot messages. Whenever any of the messages change, we're then going to say scroll to bottom and pass in the scroll view and we should be good to go. If we get our preview to load, we won't actually be able to see any difference here because we don't actually have Maybe if we just send a whole bunch of messages, there we go. Once we send a message past the bottom, you'll see that it does scroll at this point every time we send a new message. And that pretty much covers everything in our chat UI without adding any of the open AI or Firebase functionality. And that's what we're going to cover and finalize a series with in our next video. So I'll catch you in the next one where we're going to finalize this app and pretty much get everything connected up and have a full chat GPT iOS application. So I will catch you in the next one. Peace.